Hi, I'm so glad to be here and so thankful that you are here. And also the teachers who are following online, okay? That's very important. So uh, this afternoon to conclude the event, I come here to share my classroom practice with you. And I feel very proud of that because this is the very core of what we do as English language teachers. We want the success of our students and, and we feel so glad when we see their evolution. So I invite you here to take part. There will be moments you're going to use your mobile phones that we are going to kind of replicate what happens in a real classroom setting. I'm going to share with you footage of my classes to show that it is possible to, to integrate, more specifically today, generative AI with activities that integrated to the classroom practice and course book and lesson plan can help our students in the sense of becoming more fluent in the language. And uh, what I bring you is a perspective of using generative AI which is equitable, which can be replicated in classes with free resources. And as it happens in a real class, we need to support and help each other. So there's a huge and beautiful audience here. And I need you to help your colleague who's next, who's sitting close to you. Let's go. Well, the first thing that I'm going to present on the talk is the evidence that we need to have in order to start studying and using the technology with our learners. And what I bring you here is a human-centered approach to the use of generative AI. And why is that a human-centered approach? Is it because the teachers are the ones, we are the ones who are going to conduct this process. So a very important thing here, this usage, uh, effective human-machine collaboration, this is key. So it's very important to remember that. And, of course, we need to enhance our capabilities, our understanding of artificial intelligence, more specifically generative AI, for our teaching, for learning both ways, our students and ourselves in our career, in our professional development, all right? And of course, this is also going hand in hand with the digital citizenship that somehow we are also going to develop through the classes. That's a lot to take in, isn't it? But let's go. Well, this here comes from the guidance for generative AI in education research by UNESCO. So it's grounded in solid research and evidence. This is available to be downloaded and uh, you can follow the studies in the field. This is our first activity here. Uh, I would like you to join your voices with teachers from other continents who have been answering this research. It's anonymous. And here, as you scan the QR code, and if you are online, you can do that too. There's also a short link there. And uh, this uh, has some questions and it's anonymous, it's regarding your teaching context. And I know I'm talking here with teachers who are in language institutes, in regular schools, private public schools, private classes, smaller groups, a whole context to say the least, all right? Very well. I'm moving ahead and I'd like you please to keep answering. This is really, really quick, all right? The most popular generative AI, Gen AI tools. Do you recognize the symbols here? The very first one. Thank you. And the other one. It's an update of what used to be called BARD. And now it's called Gemini. 
And this one from Microsoft, anybody knows? Copilot. So what happens is, I have been using them for the following reason. Uh, in terms of generative AI, I started studying and researching back in December 2022. Every teacher remembers in the world all the debates about chat GPT. And then effectively, I started integrating that to the classes in March 2023. So this is very, very recent. And then after that, then Gemini and Copilot, and we're going to use that in the session today. Uh, these hashtags are important if you are researching or sharing things online. So for instance, if you learn something and you want to share online, uh, I guess it's great if you use one of those hashtags, right? Aha, uh -huh. this is the first thing we have to pay attention to. Uh, the mobile phone settings or the mobile device settings. Uh, here in this session, I'm going to present things for you from the perspective of the teacher preparing the lesson, but also from the perspective of the students going through the process. We're going to take turns. And this is the very first thing we need to do because we are working with voice, replies, and interaction. So I'd like you to double check, please, if your phones have English as a second language, it probably does, but when we are teaching, maybe our learners don't. So that's a very important step. You go to general management, and then from that to language, Okay, so make sure that this is working on your phone as well. So this is a little bit of a behind the scenes because uh, if you don't share that with your learners, then it's not going to work properly as it should. Okay, some more uh, studies on the theme before we go into action. It is not a paradise. There are, you know, difficulties and glitches and things that we need to be aware of. But let's focus at first on the key characteristics in terms of what defines generative AI, uh, Gen AI. It imitates, keyword imitates, replicates human capabilities and produces more elaborate outputs. So that's a key difference if you think of an assistant, uh, for instance, Google Assistant, or uh, for example, Siri or Alexa. So it develops further. The wide ranging capabilities replicate, keyword, replicate, imitates higher order thinking. And this gives us room to work on critical thinking. That's the human part of the interaction. Generates content in response to prompts. Keyword for us, prompts. That's important when we are designing the activities. This also comes from the guidance from UNESCO. But as I told you, there are some elements of caution. We are not going to dwell into that much further, but they are always in the back of our minds. And they are the first thing, um, the first red flags, and uh, UNESCO uh, calls our attention to that. Teachers, researchers, learners, that we need to understand that we need to take the critical approach. It's our duty because we think, and that is just a machine. The machine generates text that it does not understand. Of course, it's a machine. <laughs> and it might hallucinate, which means in the context of computing to produce false information. We have to keep this in mind. Like I told you, we are going to take turns between the teacher's perspective and the student's path. And I really need your cooperation here and also the teachers who are following 
online. This is the focus, generative AI for class integration. So the first thing I bring you here uh, is the idea of prompting. And this is key because that's how we direct what we need the generative AI to produce. But I'm talking about prompting in the sense that we are sharing that with our learners during classes. It's not the behind the scenes where you're planning an activity. And why is that? Because in the sense that I'm presenting right now, as one of the so many possibilities that can help us teachers, this is uh, where our learners are going to take part along with us. And the prompting in terms of AI is this. We communicate what response we are looking for that simple. For instance, uh, in this group, we were studying about the, the future of the workforce and uh, there is, of course, an integration with the material. As a teacher, we have to test drive the prompt as the first thing, and this is the exercise we are going to do next. I created and tested the prompt beforehand, and this is what we do. So, for instance, in order to have my students access Gemini, for example, or ChatGPT, which they access at least, uh, uh, especially in the first moments when you start using the browser. Yeah, it's, I personally think it's not great to ask students to go on downloading things for a number of reasons. So uh, we can use Gemini, Copilot, or ChatGPT on the browser, and that's just easy. You type, and you can start using it right away. There are different responses, but we are going to see that later on. And the prompt I created to investigate, uh, and back then it was Google Bard, okay, then now it's called Gemini. I needed them, and I, of course, we are teachers, so we assign groups, and each group has one thing to be in charge of. So I needed them to research encouraging and frightening views on the future of the workforce that was the course integration. And I'm going to play, let's see if it goes. Oh, we didn't. Oh, yes, it is. It's going. To, uh, tell me six encouraging views on the future of the workforce. To. Very well. They were working in trios. Why is that? Because the number of devices is never the same as the number of students we have in class. And they have to speak together and take part. As they ask the question, there's a reply. And if it happens that maybe they mispronounce something because of all their learning, then I always, always tell them, okay, double check the pronunciation of the words in an online dictionary. I've been recommending the Cambridge one. Let's try that. Now it's your turn. What I'm showing here is the interface of Gemini when I was working on a prompt. I would like you to experience what I did before I assigned the activity. So I'm going to ask you, please, to scan this QR code. It should take you to a Gemini page where this prompt is there. Let's try. If you, for, for any reason, it's not working for you, or if you haven't got your mobile here, or any other reason, make sure that you share, you show the person close to you. Then, make sure that once you access the site I shared with you, that you click on the symbol so you can listen to that, you know? I hear something. 
Lovely. <laughs> I can hear the phones. Thank you so much for that. So this is easy because it's taking you right there. But as a teacher, we always have something to, so that the activity is going to help our students move forward. So just reading is not enough. And thank you so much for having clicked and I could overhear from, from the stage. They need to listen to that. And the critical thinking step, they need to choose what they agree or disagree or are going to present to a colleague during a conversation moment. It, isn't it complicated when we have a warm-up activity? There's a question. They have to talk to each other. And then they say that sentence. We don't want to, but that's the first one that comes up. What sentence is that? I don't know. I have no idea. And, and it's probably genuine. But this is one way of brainstorming. Let's experience that from another perspective. Uh, I'm going to share with you now. It's not a link. It's a prompt. And uh, please scan. There's not going to be any noise because it's just a message. And as you scan the prompt, I would like to invite you to copy this prompt and paste it. You could use Gemini again, or maybe you could try ChatGPT or Copilot, it's pretty much what is up to you. So as you scan, you realize it's a text message. This is the prompt I created. So I'd like to ask you, please, if you access that, copy everything like I'm doing here, select all, copy. Go to your browser, please and choose Copilot or ChatGPT and paste that information. Help the person close to you. This is a moment uh, that we are kind of planning. Okay, so I chose ChatGPT, for example, and I paste it here and play. I'm testing this before I assign that to my students. As it keeps going, there will be a point you can choose to click and listen to what it is speaking. You could try Copilot to so I go to my browser and I type Copilot. Let's give it a try. And then you paste the same. And it takes a while to think about it. And then the learner training we need is to recommend our learners to listen to that, follow, and make their choices. You know, what exactly is the message they think they could talk about, or also new words. Could you listen to that? Who tried Copilot here, just out of curiosity? A uh, small number, ChatGPT. Okay, uh, Gemini. Okay, ChatGPT, we have a winner so far. Uh, happens that sometimes uh, the generative AI can be moody. 
and the part where it actually speaks is not working. But it's okay, then you try another one. Let's see uh, how I share that with my learners. I use Google Classroom for my school, but it could be any digital way of doing so. I also share the prompt so that they can copy. And this is key when we work with generative AI. We haven't got time to let the students think of a prompt. So this is what we do. And then I give them the choice, what is the generative AI site that they want to use? And the very next step, I'm going to show a little bit of what happens when they try using and researching. There is always uh, something that I need to point out. There is always a question, and I give them a mission. Because the generative AI output of information will help them with the listening, following, finding new words, getting main ideas so that they can agree or disagree or investigate further. And now, off we go with the video, okay? As you can see, they are using chat GPT uh, in this footage that I have just shared. Hi, what do you think will happen in the future of education in terms of English language learning? This is just to show you a little bit of how that goes. And they keep listening, and this helps learners who have a hard time when they listen to something in a foreign language. It helps us with critical thinking, because we are not going to agree with everything blindly. And it's so impressive when they choose the points that they disagree with or if they are in doubt, uh, they can also double check that. Remember, we cannot trust it blindly. And as a follow-up, I usually ask them to also type the ideas. And it is very impressive to see. Here, uh, we have two students in each comment who shared the key points. Even though they are exposed to the same prompt, to the same question, they come up with different ways of looking at things. And we learn so much with each other and from that. Let's see an old activity here. This is a very quick one using Copilot. The first time we did that. Oopsie. What I need to show in this video is that they use... Over the next decade, despite the rise of automation, AI, and machine learning, teachers will continue to play a crucial role in English language learning. Finally, some sense, yeah? <laughs> uh, so there are things that come up differently in the different platforms. Let's give it a try again. I need you please to scan the code. And now you know how it goes, yeah? We are going to take a look at a different point here. Let's imagine that what you want is an interaction, student machine, like a training, like practice, dialogue style. So 
there's this prompt I'm testing as a teacher now. Let's see if that works. You know, uh, there will be moments you are going to try a prompt and it doesn't give back the answer you're expecting or for some reason it takes a different way and it's okay, it's part of planning a class. But what happens is uh, that we don't have to worry about preparing slides, for example. It's about our reasoning as a teacher. It's the human part of coming up with the prompt. So this is the prompt we have. As you scanned, what do you have there? Is it text or is it uh, linked to a genera uh, generative AI platform? What is that like? Yeah. So what is the next step then? If it is a text, what is the next step? Yeah, you go to a generative AI platform that you choose. So, open that. Next step. Copy. I'm making it easier for you today. <laughs> it's just to save time. And this is the process once you have the prompt that your students are going to go through, okay? So, you select everything and you copy. I would like to know uh, if the teacher is following online, uh, getting to use that too, let us know in the chat, okay? I'll be reading that afterwards. And then you can choose a platform to go. I'm choosing Gemini this time. And then as you choose a platform, you just paste it there. You're doing that? Or if you are not, is the person close to you doing that? This is so important because we try it out here. It's intensive course. The class is never fully generative AI based. It's just because I have this 50, 45 minutes to share that with you. And then you click in play. And what happened here? There's just one question for me, let's hear. Oh yeah, play it loud so I can listen to that too. Thank you. What do you do when you want to relax? When I want to relax, I listen to some music and watch Netflix. That sounds like a great way to unwind. Why do you prefer to relax with music and Netflix? Check it out. It's asking me questions now. If you keep interacting, let's give it a try. I'd like you to try. I tried with Gemini. Check if it works with ChatGPT or Copilot, please, uh, with the person close to you. And while you're trying it out, See if you can answer the questions. Imagine yourself as an elementary learner or as an intermediate level learner. I always keep in mind that if something works with elementary learners, with intermediate learners, then it's going to work with the more advanced ones. Keep going with the interaction and answering. This is one aspect that we can integrate as a warmer for practice because the prompt clearly gave the instruction. Please <laughs> ask me these questions directing one at a time. Listen to my reply. You see that everything is here? All the reasoning comes from the teacher. And if you come up with a prompt and it doesn't work properly, you just try it again. But test drive before using that with your learners. I don't know, uh, I can't remember now if this works beautifully as a dialogue with Copilot and ChatGPT as well. But remember, if it, it doesn't, which way it doesn't? ChatGPT? 
co-pilot, for example. It, it asks all the questions at once, doesn't it? Thank you. And that's it, we are trying it out. So it doesn't work with one, it works with the older. Let me show you now uh, an intermediate level student going through this prompt, okay? Very well. Sounds fun. Let's act out this part of the exam. I'll ask you the questions and listen carefully to your answers. Remember, there are no wrong answers here. I just want to hear about your preferences and thoughts. All right, first question. What do you do when you want to relax? Why? When I want to relax, I talk with my friends. They are so cool. That sounds like a great way to unwind. Spending time with friends can be a lot of fun and a good way to distress. Is there anything specific you enjoy doing with them that helps you relax? Sure, let's get started. One, what do you do when you want to relax? When I want to relax, I read some books and play some music. That sounds like a... Uh, you see, uh, the first student was actually getting to learn how to interact, so he had to allow the usage of the microphone and remember where to click. There's a lot of learner training involved in using generative AI, because as a teacher, we know the path we want to lead our learners to. It's not only about reading the answers, because we know how important it is to actually listen. We understand that students who have a harder time with listening, with organizing their ideas, that's a very important cognitive step to go through. And then they can also choose new words. In this case here, the word they didn't know, like nobody in class, they aged 13, 12 years old, uh, they didn't understand the meaning of unwind, and of course not. And that's okay, let's check. What does it mean? Can you share that with your colleagues? And then they kept answering two or three questions, okay? Does it work all the time seamlessly? No especially in the first attempts. And I, I'm here and I really want to invite you to consider which moments can I integrate generative AI to some of my classes in a productive way? We are the teachers, we are the ones who are going to take this decision. Is it going to be a follow-up for an activity in the book, for example? Is that going to be a warmer activity? Or maybe that's the way we are going to conclude the class. So these are just some ideas. The next one is an integration with the class. And this is a group of adult learners, uh, the Paralympic athletes, because Cambridge, I teach, and Cambridge has a partnership and supports with the course material for the athletes, for the Paralympic athletes. Many of them are going to be in Paris representing our country. And they attend classes online because they are in different states of Brazil. And I'm going to share some footage of the breakout rooms, which integrates with the topic of weather. And when they travel to international competitions, to many countries, different countries around the world, the weather condition is really important for a number of reasons. Okay, so what I'm showing here is the level they study with EVO Digital to be online classes, which means that the generative AI integration is not a privilege of in-person classes. 
it's also very possible to be used in online settings as well. And this is the point for Unit 12, one of the lessons. What's the weather like in and the temperature? I needed them in the beginning of the class to, to get some information, to be exposed to that. And one of the students had this idea of asking about the moon. So let's watch that. They are in a breakout room. And this is being used. It's like instead. Yeah. Temperature extremes. The moon's surface temperature swings wildly between day and night. In the daytime, especially near the equator, it can get very hot, reaching up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 121 degrees Celsius. At night, temperatures plummet to minus 208 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 133 degrees Celsius. In a breakout room, somebody needs to be in charge. So we assign responsibilities. We model. It's the same way as teaching. It's learner training. So first, you do that with the whole group. And then you share the link. And then you say, OK, what about if you check something else? And then you share the prompt. And then you share an open prompt. And they could replace. Uh, I was thinking of countries at first, and they asked about a few countries related to the championships they had ahead, but also about the moon. And the lesson integrates with uh, speaking the temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius, so we can get to extract that, and when they go to the lesson, there's something they already know and expressions, and we are teachers, we know how to take them through things. I also use generative AI with this guidance when I'm teaching online and I have a number of students who, are visually, who have visual impairment, total visual impairment, or low vision. So I have learned that it is simple but it can be inclusive as well, because they get to listen to that. And I use, uh, it's not generative AI, but it's super helpful, Google Assistant, to change the, the input of things that we can see so that they can hear. And you know what? The ones who are not visually impaired also benefit from that. When we consider artificial intelligence, there is this whole sci-fi environment that seems very far away from us, and lots of very expensive technology. Oh no, this is not going to be used at school. So I invite you not to look at that. I invite you to look at what is possible to be done regardless of where you are teaching. If you are in a small city, in a small school with private students, in a state school, let's work in collaboration with our learners. I'm not telling you it's easy, but it's really rewarding because they get to understand the reason why. And the human behind that integration, we are the human element because we know where we need to take our students to. It's so important that AI or generative AI supports the development. But all the reasoning and the class process depends on the teacher. So there's the material to follow, the lessons, the aims. And another important thing, communicative approach to language acquisition. So I know it's very tempting to keep using generative AI just behind the scenes for class preparation. But it is important that our students experience things. Do you know what I mean? So when they realize that they are getting more information, so when they talk to the colleague, they know all the things they can talk about. 
instead of saying, I have no idea, I don't know. They say, well, and they can use that as a model and build from there. There's learner training, nothing different from our classes, right? There is repetition and modeling and collaboration and glitches that might happen. And it's okay because we learn, we try, and we keep learning. Uh, the last thing I'd like to share with you is something that is still ongoing, that is the development of digital CPD for English language teachers, specifically by UNESCO. And this AI competency framework that will define, that will guide us. I, I don't think anything right now when it comes to technology should be written on stone, but that's going to be more specific guidance, you know? Uh, and this is focusing on teaching practices in an ethical and effective manner. I guess you remember all the prompts I created they do not involve sharing personal information. We are the teachers in charge, so we know where to guide our students through. This is just one example here, yeah? There's going to be the Digital Learning Week uh, by UNESCO in September in Paris. And I'm very happy to say that this project that I have been working with my students. We were invited, uh, I've been working also in collaboration with webinars for Cambridge, which, is, which are in the channel, if you want earlier, like more guided uh, generative AI uh, webinars from January, February, May, you can find it there. And we are going to present in UNESCO in Paris later on, okay? And that is precisely where the guidance is going to be developed. Thank you. I feel that if we can join voice, voice, our voice with the world in collaboration. When always I'm teaching, and I have taught for a very long time in so many different contexts, 27 years, okay? I always think of how important it is that we use resources that can be replicated somehow in contexts that are not uh, favored, in contexts with more limitations. So why not? Why is it that a student far away cannot make use of something that exists for their learning development? Remember when I told you about the hashtags? If you use some work, if you want to share that, it is really important when you use the hashtags, this can reach further. And Cambridge has always been developing some guidance. You can scan over there. Artificial intelligence and teaching, learning and assessment. And this is a topic, assessment and generative AI. Yeah? I've been researching and let's see, uh, pretty soon be able to share more things. Also writing, yeah? very challenging. We know that AI is creating this whole new paradigm in teaching, learning, assessment and doubts. But this understanding of how this will evolve needs to be looked at from the perspective of educators of learning. So in this site, you're going to have access to this guidance, you know, where it gives us English language teachers or ELT professionals important guidance on how to use it. And I invite you to forget about beliefs that are limiting. Oh, I'm too old, or oh, this is not for me. We are all able to learn and to adjust and to add something new 
to our practice that is not a passing fad, but that is something important for our learners, okay? Thank you so very much for being here and for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. <laughs> it's been great. Thank you. I think we all feel a little bit more comfortable about using Gen AI in our classroom, right? I would love to hear from them. Tag me, use hashtags. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, so we can exactly. get to know. Thank you so much. We really Thank appreciate you. it. We're not going to do Q&A, but Raquel is always <laughs> online, so you can send her your exactly. questions. Exactly. Um, and I'll Thank give you. some announcements. Thank you, Thank Raquel, you. again, once again. Thank you. Thank you.